Good morning and welcome to On the Margin. I'm Giovanni Russinello and this is 89.3 FM, your station for jazz and justice in the nation's capital. Later in the show, we'll be joined by Jean-Pierre Filiou, who's the author of the, f- the first full history of Gaza available in English. It's come out just this month. We'll also be speaking to Paul Rupert, who is currently working to open Upshur Street Books, uh, which would be the first new independent bookstore in D.C. in over 20 years. But first, a segment on poet lore, the nationally renowned poet- poetry journal, which is based at the Writers' Center in Bethesda, Maryland. Poetlore has just released its 125th anniversary edition, and as usual, it is an inspired collection of work from some of the most notable and humane poets of today. Here in the studio with me to discuss the journal's storied history, as well as its present, is E. Ethelbert Miller, poet, activist, author, and editor of Poetlore. Ethelbert Miller, welcome to On the Margin. It's always nice to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Absolutely. Thank you for coming in. Um... The best way, I think, to start is maybe with a little bit of poetry. Okay, you know, um, if you pick up this 125th anniversary issue, there's a beautiful picture of um, Paul Lawrence Dunbar that we obtained from the Ohio History Connection. And uh, it sort of frames the issue in terms of um, issues of race. Exactly. Uh, One of the things that we try to do in Port Law Magazine is um, we lay the magazine out where the poems follow each other. And so when you pick up this magazine, there's going to be a number of poems um, about race. What I find, um, what I'm very happy about is that some of the work is by individuals who are not African American. So you see white writers talking about race. Um, We have a wonderful writer here in Washington, D.C., who I'm happy is in this issue, Joseph Ross. And here are his two poems, which are poems for Willie Lewis. And Willie Lewis uh, was a person who testified against the two men who killed Emmett Till back in 1955 in Money, Mississippi. And listen to these two poems. First one. When your word is a match. When you walk past Klansmen smiling at you on your way into the courthouse, wondering how you will ever live here after this airless day. When you tell the story of a pickup truck a barn, a boy, a threat. When you point at two men in the courtroom and everyone gasps at what they have never seen but for but know is true. When your word is a match head, hissing into flame, testifying aloud but blown out as soon as you speak. When all the air in the courtroom shakes its white head. When the smiling men brag about killing the boy in the barn. When they joke about a river, about what cannot float. When you flee to the mother's city to breathe air that isn't a gasp. When you hide the name your parents gave you for fear the men from the barn will come smiling for you too. When you speak to your wife years later after a lifetime of breathing beside her. When this air thick as lead presses your chest to breaking. When the match's flame consumes all the air revealing a coffin, a boy a mother, and you burning still. And then the second poem, 18 years for Willie Lewis. What in your 18 years taught you this language? Who knew picking cotton in another man's field could strengthen your hand to rise like this? You heard the lawyer's question. You knew his answer, so you raised your hand from the wooden witness box and pointed at two men who knew nothing of picking cotton, who knew nothing of bent backs. You spoke their names aloud into air that never knew yours. Those are poems by Joseph Ross, which I think are phenomenal. Beautiful. And those poems begin or are very close to the beginning of this current issue of Poet Lore. As you mentioned,